Okay, so here's the thing that we want to talk about today. Last time we talked about bringing in video footage, we talked about adding some type, we talked about bringing in some audio. Today we want to refine it a little bit more. What I want to do for this scene is uh, I want to have a little bit of a transition from the uh, my name coming in, that sort of logo page, to this uh, you know example animation of dynamics. So what I want is right in between from here to here, it just jumps, right? But what I want to have is a little bit more of a transition, kind of a fade in, fade out kind of effect. It's called a crossfade. Um, so in order to do that, what we can do is we're going to set in some keyframes, and we're going to play around with the opacity of each one of those levels. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to this logo test right here, and I want to zoom in a little bit closer so I can get a, a fuller frame of what I'm working with here. Um, so that's pretty good. What you can do is you can open up this tab and go down to opacity. Okay. Now, if it's uh, you know, if we bring this down to zero, it's black, right? If we bring it up to uh, 100%, it's full render. What we want to make sure though is that these two areas overlap each other. Okay. So this uh, scene right here is overlapping this one. Okay. So in order to do this, we want to sort of make sure that those two things are, are working properly. So I'm just going to take this actually and drag it over a little bit more so that it's lined up a bit. So what we want to do then is right at where this one starts, okay, you see it's overlapping about this much, uh, you know, it's about uh, six or seven frames that it's overlapping. Uh, here what I want to do is uh, click on a keyframe. Now in this case, in After Effects, there's this little clock, and anytime you click that, it's going to automatically drop in a keyframe. The way we see it is in this uh, little, you know, yellow icon that appears, this little diamond-shaped uh, icon right below. Um, so when you do that, uh, it's the same sort of thing as using the auto keyframes in cinema. Once you drop, once that's on and you uh, move forward in the timeline, so if I move forward to the end of that clip, okay, and then I uh, turn the opacity down to zero, okay, now it's recorded that my, my motions, it's recorded that keyframe in that setting, and now what I should have is this one slowly transitioning into that one. Okay, see how before it was just a quick jump, and now what I have is a, a smooth transition, kind of crossfading in from my name to that other image below it. Okay, and the reason what, so what it's happening is you're just changing the opacity from 100% to zero over the course of that time, and uh, and it's allowing the the frame the video underneath to show through. Okay, so in order for this to work, you need to have them stacked, layered on top of each other. Uh, but that's just a really simple way of um, of editing those scenes. You know, you drop in those basic keyframes, and then uh, and, and then uh, you can allow it to to cross into another one. Now, the other thing you can do is you can you know, there's lots of ways that you can use keyframes in this software. Uh, if I wanted to adjust the you know work with the adjustment layer, let's say on this uh, part of the project down here. Um, so in this adjustment layer, I have uh, some effects. Okay, I have my photo filter. If I open this up, uh, you know, you could even animate the density here. So if I if I worked uh, from let's just say from this point right here, I'll drop in a keyframe for the density, and uh, I'm going to bring this down to zero. That was the original sort of color I had worked with. Okay. And then, uh, you know, again, you move forward in the timeline, you change the whatever you've done, you've, you manipulate that more, I'm going to make it like 70% now. And now uh, we should see a transition of color from this one slowly getting warmer, warmer, warmer to that one. Okay? So you see that, how it's like gradually coming into the scene, gradually changing its scale and its shape. So there's lots of ways you can experiment with that. Simply, again, what you need to do is turn the keyframe on. As soon as you click on that little clock, it's going to drop in a little keyframe. Uh, you need to move forward to the timeline and change it. Do something different, and you'll see that you can have that uh, appearance happen. So we can talk further. There's lots of ways that you can use keyframing in this project, uh, but for now, I think those are just some simple ways that we can deal with transitions and also manipulate uh, the effects sort of coming in and out of the scene. Okay, so once we get this all finished, once it's all rendered and, and uh, not rendered, but once it's all put together and, and, and uh, edited how you like, we need to render this out, okay? Uh, in order to do that, uh, we go up to Composition, and then just click on Make Movie. Uh, I'm sorry, not Make Movie. What do I want here? Add to Render Queue, that's what I want. Click on Add to the Render Queue, 
And uh, well, let's try that again. Sorry, guys. Just click Add to the Render Queue. And what's going to happen is uh, you're going to get, now I have a million of these things up here. I don't want that. Take, delete this one, delete this one. Okay, so here's my, uh, my, uh, my video. It's called, you know, it's going to name it whatever you want to name it. You can change the name if you want to. Uh, and you can um, label it something different. What you want to do is just there's three basic things you want to work with. You want to make sure that first uh, the best settings are, are on. Uh, you can uh, you can hear you can click if you click on the little on the name best settings you can check it out uh, you want the full resolution uh, 1280 by 720 or whatever resolution you're working with just make sure that you have that at uh, at the native resolution and also 30 frames per second okay so those are the few things we want to check there the other thing is that um, we want to change the output so right now it's lossless and uh, we want to change this uh, to hold on. Let's do this. It's easier. Uh, from lossless with alpha to H.264. It's just going to be a, a, a quicker render for us. It's also going to be compressed a little bit, so it won't take up as much room, and we can put it on the shared drive. And then finally, um, the thing to do is to click here and to just name it something and save it somewhere. So I'm just going to call this uh, test after effects uh, and save it. Okay. Now, in order to make this, in order to render this, you have to go up here and click render. Okay. And what it's going to do is going to calculate uh, your project. Uh, you see it's rendering pretty quickly, a lot faster than uh, Cinema 4D, right? Uh, it's going to go through the whole thing, and once it's um, uh, completed its render, it'll save the file to where you've de designated it, and you'll have uh, your video ready to go. Okay. So uh, essentially, you just need to you know work with your edits. You can preview all your edits, make sure everything is good. Once you're once you're done with it, you add it to the render queue. Uh, you know, adjust those settings. Render it out, and you're all set. Okay?